Hello, and thank you for joining us for Public Health in Action, where we discuss various public health issues here in Stanley County. One of the good fortunes of being in uh, Stanley County is that uh, we've had a lot of advancements in many, many ways, and one of those is uh, a trend that we're all living longer, which is a good thing. We see that uh, nationally, statewide, and also here in Stanley County. Uh, that can bring some good things, but it also brings some challenges. And in order to address, address some of those challenges in meeting needs of seniors in our community, we have the uh, good fortune of having the Stanley County Senior Services Department. And with me today is Becky Weemhoff, who's the director of that program. And we're going to be discussing uh, the whole realm of issues surrounding uh, seniors and our older adults here in Stanley County. So, Becky, thank you for joining thank me today. Thank you for inviting me. Who are the folks served by uh, the Senior Services Program? Okay. Because of our grant funding, a lot of the people that we serve are 60 years old and older. But there, a lot of our classes, activities, and programs that are at the Senior Center are open for all adults. So we do serve a, um, a good number of people that are under the age of 60, but our grant-funded program where age is an eligibility, they, are, they do have to be 60 years old or older. Okay. And um, as I alluded to earlier, some of the, uh, as we get older, that's, it's wonderful that we, are, that we're, we have good, you know, better health care, longevity is something that's a benefit, but there are challenges, and what are some of those challenges uh, for folks who are 60 and above? Okay, you know, I think that whenever you turn 60 years old, your needs don't suddenly change. Right. The needs that you had as an adult are still there as you age beyond 60. Um, the thing is, we sometimes have to provide more concentrated services for those that are 60 years old and older. And I know we're going to talk about some of those, but um, the need for good nutrition. We meet that with our nutrition program and home delivered meals and supplemental meal program. The need for help at home. We meet that need with in-home services program. The need for transportation. Maybe for some reason someone can't drive anymore we can provide that transportation. And then for those that are active and well and want to stay moving, we have a lot of different classes and programs at the Senior Center. Well, and I'm looking forward to, uh, I know that many times if I've been over there during the day and uh, it's, it amazes me, it's like a, uh, a beehive in there with a lot of activity that's going on. So we are, we're quite fortunate to have a, a lot of that Thank activity. You. Um, speaking of those programs that are that are offered, um, many of them are offered on site, but there's also some that are that are off site. Could you sort That's of right. give us some of that uh, breakdown of, of, okay. of what those are? Sure. Um, the nutrition program is offered off site. We have four congregate nutrition sites in the county, and they're located in Albemarle, Norwood, Oakborough, and Locust. These are locations where senior adults can come together for a program and a midday meal five days a week. You do have to be 60 years old or older to attend and that's because of our funding. Um, also we have a home delivered meal program that is connected to the nutrition program. Um, these home delivered meals are meals that are delivered by volunteers to homebound individuals in their home. Um, we, right now, we currently have 15 home-delivered meal routes that go out from those four nutrition sites that are in the county. To determine eligibility for a home-delivered meal client, a, a supervisor does have to do a home visit and do an assessment to determine their eligibility. Um, these, unless you um, know about these nutrition sites and home-delivered meals, you may not know mm -hmm. about uh, th these two programs because they are located away from, um, from our from our building. We also have a, um, a program called a supplemental meal program where we provide cases of Insure Plus and Glucerna to eligible seniors. You do have to be eligible for that and you do have to pay for that for the, for the cases of Insure. Um, 
I love to tell people the number of people that we have served each year. And actually last year we served over 21,000 congregate meals out of the four nutrition sites in the county. And we served over 31,000 home delivered meals last wow. year. Wow. And we issued over 1,000 cases of Insure and Glucerna. And that uh, there's 24 cans in a case. Wow. That's an amazing number um, mm -hmm. for little old Stanley County it is. in particular. And you mentioned the fact that volunteers are critical. So obviously, we have to really give a lot of uh, praise to the volunteers Absolutely. who may help make that happen. You mentioned eligibility um, and, and that a supervisor has to go out to check on that. But for someone who may be listening at home and wondering if their mother or parent <laughs> or someone may qualify What's the process for that in terms of the homebound part? Because obviously uh, it would seem to be more open to get to the site for a, a meal. Sure. That part's a little bit easier, but could you but kind of explain But some people that? just can't go to the site. Right. And the, the procedure would be to call our department at the phone number that's in the book and just tell the person that answers the phone what, you, what you're interested in, and you will be, be referred to a social worker who will take that kind of inf information from you. Um, our standards require that routes not be more than uh, so many meals on a route and not last so long, and so therefore you may have to wait for the, for the in this case, home-delivered meals um, based on where you live. Okay. Um, but um, at some point, a supervisor would go out to see you and to do a home do a home visit and determine eligibility. Okay, very good. And I assume not to. We probably would get back to this point at some point in our discussion. But uh, the same would be true for volunteers if they're interested. I'm sure y'all would welcome those kind of phone Absolutely. calls. Absolutely, and really, we have a large, large group of volunteers. We it's probably between three and four hundred people. Wow. Now they also volunteer at the senior center, but the bulk of those volunteers do deliver meals because most volunteers deliver once or twice a month, um, and they deli they're delivering anywhere from ten to fifteen meals wow. on a given route. Yes. Without the home, without the volunteers, we would not be able to serve the number that we do Very in that good. program, yeah. and it's a great program. Yeah, no, that's uh, that's excellent to hear. Um, the one of the other programs that uh, you alluded to was in-home care, and um, you know we we think a lot about that in terms of uh, homebound folks who need additional assistance, but, and, but, but what all is involved in the in-home care program? Okay, um, the in, we call it in-home services or in-home aid program, okay. and this program sends an aid out into a client's home that's eligible, who's, who's been determined eligible by the supervisor. This aid goes into a home once or twice a week for two to four hours, and they are performing household type chores. These are often the chores that a senior um, starts losing the ability to do. For example, um, cleaning the house, vacuuming the floor, doing laundry, even transporting them to the doctor, transporting them to, um, um, to grocery a store, grocery store. Grocery store, yes, yeah. yes. And they can even cook a meal if, if that's what the client needs. Um, um, so it's not really care. I mean, I, I guess I kind of alluded to care. It, care is, is implies that there's, you know, medical something going right. on, but it's it's more assistive around the house. It is. Uh, now we do provide limited personal care as well mm -hmm. in that program. It depends on what a client needs, and that supervisor will determine from the home visit what this client needs. Basically, um, the ser this service in addition to our others are things that someone needs to stay in their home as long as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, we do get United Way funding for in-home services and we are so grateful for that because it allows us to serve at least 20 more clients a year based on the funding that we get. Um, we do in, um, contract with four local home care agencies who also um, serve our clients so it, it enables us to serve more clients than we're currently able to do with just the staff mm -hmm. that we have. Um, last year we served um, 139 clients 
and that we provided over 16,000 hours of direct client care. Wow, it's a lot of time. Mm -hmm. Now, and how long are folks with the, I guess it just depends how long mm -hmm. the need is uh, for the most part. It is. They, are, they receive the service as long as they want it. Um, very few elect to go off. Most mm -hmm. everyone ends up either going into placement in an assisted living or nursing home or passing away, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. So, but we know that we're keeping them in their home longer with not only in-home services, but with home-delivered meals. Right. Well, and I think the other point is we all know that uh, most folks want to be in their own environment Absolutely. as opposed to a, a facility or institution. And um, on top of that, uh, it's one, it's cheaper. And if you can do things that keep them in their home, uh, it's going to be better for the family and provide some relief. And I can't help but think that, it, yes, vacuuming and doing the dishes are all good, but I would guess the, one of the biggest pieces of this time is the emotional communication and human support of conversation with someone and oh, absolutely. dealing with that. Yeah. Um, the clients and the aides that go into their home really do develop a bond. And um, there have been many stories of where an aide would, would um, walk into a home and maybe smell gas wow. and react to that, get the client out of the house. Other times um, the client maybe has fallen and the aide will walk in and find the client, wow. so react to that. Same thing with home delivered meals. Um, we often say, at least with the home delivered meal program, that they are delivering more than a meal. Yes. Because yeah. they're actually connecting with, talking to, and providing just a few words of encouragement to right. the client. I know I've had uh, some, some friends and folks that I've known who've been uh, deliverers on the uh, volunteering for a uh, uh, that program and, and they would uh, kind of comically say, you know, you, you bring the meal and then you realize you've got five more to deliver and you're not going to be able to get out of there very quickly <laughs> to do that because the folks want to, they want to talk. talk. Yeah. yeah. Which I guess is a good thing, but yeah. presents a challenge. It does. Yeah. yeah. Um, there are um, other activities that fall under senior uh, services. And I know when I first came here, uh, over 10 years ago, I was quite amazed even then, and I know it still has expanded, but um, what are uh, some of those other kinds of activities provided for older okay. adults? We provide probably close to or over a hundred different activities in any given year. Wow. Some of our activities go on every week, some once a month, some every quarter, and some are just yearly events. Um, we are a certified senior center of excellence by the state of North Carolina. And we take a lot of pride in that because we actually have to go through a certification process just like the health department mm -hmm. does. Um, and so that we are real proud of what we offer to the community because that equates to us being certified as a senior center of excellence. Um, we like to think that, the, that everything we're offering to the to the seniors and to the public at the Senior Center is meeting the whole gamut of needs that, that adults have. Whether it's mentally, keeping adults mental, and seniors mentally um, fit. For example, we offer all kinds of card classes. Uh, mm -hmm. We offer um, bridge classes that, that play several times a week. Canasta, Bunko. We offer um, in fact, I, there's so many, I'm going to have to look at my notes. We offer wood carving, basket weaving, stained glass. We have monthly lunches with a program. Um, we offer evidence-based classes that are taught there. For those seniors that, that, are fit, that want to remain physically active, we offer several exercise classes throughout the week. We offer country two-step classes, Zumba several times a week, ballroom dance classes, gentle yoga, and Tai Chi. Um, and this is just a few of what we offer. Um, we offer several, several events that, um, that, that take a lot of planning, but we, they are a lot of fun. And one of those is our annual 90 plus birthday party where we, where we honor the, um, the 90 plus year olds in the county with a birthday party. 
you know, my goodness, if they've lived that long, they need to be they honored with, a, with several birthday <laughs> parties, actually. Yeah. And that's always a treat. Last year, when we had our party in 2015, we had seven people there that were over the age of 90, and about probably four or five of them were over the age of 100. Wow. Wow. In fact, one of the ladies that was 106 years old was actually at the senior center playing bingo this week. And actually, I forgot to mention bingo. Yeah. Interesting. Well, yeah. you know, in, in hearing all of those activities, it makes it sound, you know, getting older doesn't, doesn't sound like a bad deal if no. you've got those kind of uh, activities to keep you, keep keep you going. going. How do folks, for these activities, do they... Do they get there? I guess they have to get there themselves, or there's is any transportation yes, available? Yes, yes, we we contract with SCUSA to provide transportation, and SCUSA can bring them. Okay, good, because uh, don't want that to be a barrier for yeah. getting some of that in, enjoyment that of either. those activities. Um, one of the issues that obviously faces families uh, and others is the challenge for caregivers of aging seniors. And uh, that's, that's something oftentimes, you know, as uh, uh, you often hear that you, it becomes sort of like child care. You, you know, you're having to uh, tend to mom or dad in a, in, a, in a different way like you maybe would have had to do a child. What kind of things do y'all offer for child, uh, for child care, for uh, caregivers in, uh, okay. in your program? We do have a program called Family Caregiver Support Program. Um, I'm really proud of this program because we do a lot with very limited money. Right now, we get about $25,000 a year. And with that money, we're able to provide um, respite care, which is send someone into the home to relieve the caregiver so they can run errands or maybe go in a back bedroom and take a nap, whatever they might need. Uh, we also offer group respite. We have sent in the past year three clients to the Care Cafe, which is a group mm -hmm. respite center in town. Um, we, ha we sponsor an annual caregiver fair. We sponsor an annual ca grand care luncheon. Grandparents right. can be caregivers to their right. grandchildren. Right. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Um, we supply a limited number of incontinence supplies. And we also have caregiver packets that we, can, we freely give out to people that have the need to, to see this kind of information. And we also have a caregiver library with a lot of information on caregiving, and we freely loan that out as well. So there is a good support structure there for folks who may be, and I would guess you would entertain uh, phone calls to just talk about oh, the yeah. challenge that someone may be facing, uh, feeling like there's a heavy burden on them. And I could see being overwhelmed and just needing uh, to chat about how I'm feeling trying to tend to my grandfather or grandmother or whoever. You know, it is a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week job to be a mm -hmm. caregiver, and it can be overwhelming. Yeah. And so really a caregiver needs to take care of themselves in addition to taking care of the person that they're supposed to take care of. Um, again, we have a very small budget, but last year we served 15 clients with almost 1,000 hours of short-term respite. Uh, we serve three clients so they could go to the care cafe. I think we do a lot with such a, a lot was a small amount. A small amount of money, right? right. That is definitely true. Um, Alzheimer's disease mm. is another challenge that we're all facing. We certainly see it when we do our community health assessment. How it tends to uh, trend upward, and we're seeing that statewide as well as here. Um, are there some uh, efforts going on there to try to help in that regard? Yes, you know it's unfortunate that that um, it is trending up. We do have an Alzheimer's support group that meets once a month at the senior center. Uh, right now, it meets on the second Thursday in the month. So, if anyone is interested in attending that, then by all means. Um, Call the Senior Center and we'll connect you with the right staff person and we would love to have you. Sometimes all they want to do is talk in the support mm -hmm. group. Mm -hmm. I could see that because it's, uh, I know of uh, folks that I know who've had family members with Alzheimer's. Talking and just dealing with that with others is mm -hmm. relieving. I mean, it's, it's what's really needed. It is. And, the, you know, our services also help 
um, caregivers if they are caring for someone with Alzheimer's, whether it's a family caregiver support program, the in-home aid program, or even home delivered meals. We have, um, our services provide that kind of support okay. and help if they need it. Very good, yeah, so it can kind of blend, I mean, in some cases sort of blend together mm -hmm. in, in many ways. Yeah. You know, and in every situation is different. Yeah. One family may need in-home in aid or family caregiver program. Another one may just need the meals. It's, every situation is different. It's a little different. Uh, the Senior Health Insurance uh, Information Program uh, is, is something we hear about a little bit. Um, can you explain that? Uh, yeah. Or try to? <laughs> yeah, and it, it is really a great program. This is a program that is um, under the Dep North Carolina Department of Insurance. And they, um, they have staff in Raleigh that are on a toll-free number that anybody can call if they have Medicare questions. Um, it, it, I think they're open 8 to 5, Monday through Friday. But also at the local level, we do have a SHIP program here. Up till July the 1st, that was located at the Cooperative Extension Office. And then July the 1st on, it was moved to, our, to the Senior Services Department. Um, this program trains people to become certified SHIP counselors. Um, I'm one of the staff members at the, at the Senior Services Department that has been trained. And it's, it's, uh, um, it is a very intense, overwhelming test that, and, and that you have to take to become actually certified. But um, this program helps Medicare recipients with um, choosing a Medicare supplement, finding a Part D plan, um, if they have questions about what Part A or Part B pays for, um, helps them even to understand their, their Medicare bill is a, whenever they receive it. It's a great program and we have a, um, about six volunteers who have also been trained who volunteer their time to meet wow. with individuals. Right now we see appointments in our department twice a month um, and so we do schedule appointments for those. Um, it, it's a great program. The thing is that these counselors provide non-biased, um, free information to anyone that might need it. Um, and I got do, recently got an email this week that said that um, the counselors last year saved Stanley County seniors one hundred and ninety-nine thousand dollars. Wow. And wow. probably a lot of that is looking is during the Part D open enrollment period, where which is October the 15th through December the 2nd. Everybody who has a Part D plan needs to look at their plan every year because the drug formulary will change, mm -hmm. and you just you need to do that. And often we can find you a least expensive plan or a plan that covers more of your, of your drugs that you're taking. How many of, I'm sure, uh, it does get complicated. It gets complicated uh, for everyone, but yeah. particularly, I would think, for seniors and their caregivers, it, it can get overwhelming. But oh, yeah. I, uh, I would guess that a lot of folks get into a plan and probably never reassess right. it. Is that true? Oh, that's true. I think it's just, it just takes time and energy to, look at, to have someone look at your plans for you, and it's overwhelming. You know, you don't understand it. Hopefully the counselor can ease a person's um, fears and, make, and make, the, make the plans understandable. But it is. Yeah. It's, it's really um, overwhelming. Yeah, well, I, uh, I know my father uh, is in that, in that boat, and it's, um, every time it you know, kind of comes around, you, you just kind of go, wow, here we are. Uh, I I don't, I'd rather just not have to deal with all of the, because you think of it as red tape, and and uh, but at the same time, there's a lot of savings that can be had if mm -hmm. the right plans are chosen. Oh, absolutely! And in um, and the hundred and hundred ninety nine thousand yeah. dollars, that's putting mon keeping money in a senior's pocket that they can use for other things, right. whether it's for food or just enjoying Other it. Needs. I mean, that's awesome. Yeah, no, it is. Our volunteers do a great job, and our counselors who are trained do a great job as well. The, um, we're right in the middle of another uh, 
season, tax season, and um, obviously that's another area that can be kind of overwhelming for folks. And y'all actually provide some uh, we do. tax assistance. Yes, and, th and that too is a great service to the, to the seniors of Stanley County. Um, the tax aid program is an AARP program where um, counselors actually take the training and become certified to become a tax aid volunteer. That program has grown in the last several years, and so on the days that the uh, tax aid appointments are seen, our lobby is just swarming with people. Mm -hmm. They do a great job. Uh, we have the counselors actually sit down, review the tax information with, with a client, and then they'll file their tax return electronically. Wow, so that actually they will process the, oh, yes, the absolutely. whole thing. Yes, so, so when they it's leave. It's not just they, getting guidance or advice, no, it's actually. They actually prepare. prepare the tax return. Wow. And it is a free service. We do have some people that feel a need just to make some type donation. of donation, but it's certainly not needed. But they do a great job. And, the, and those volunteers spend a lot of time, not only just becoming trained, but staying trained and even seeing appointments. So they're wonderful. Well, I was going to say, that is a wonderful service. Uh, it is. Both for the, the, the seniors, but um, uh, big kudos to those folks who are willing to be trained to then provide that. Mm -hmm. is, uh, that's a big commitment. It is. And dedication. Um, another program that, that I've, we hear about is the Are You OK program. Right. Uh, share a little about yeah. that. Yeah. Um, this program is actually um, about 22, 23 years old. It is a telephone reassurance program that actually will call clients at a, at a specified time seven days a week. And all that person needs to do is just answer the phone and the caller can make sure they're okay and that's all it is. Um, um, years ago when it started, 22, 23 years ago, it was the calls were made on a computer, and the computer was located at the 911 office. Um, and the program worked great. Um, the computer would actually make the phone calls, and the 911 dispatcher could hear the the senior the person answer and know that they were okay. And and if they weren't okay, the senior was supposed to say, "I'm not feeling well. I've fallen or whatever." Um, as with all computers, that computer became outdated. And so in the meantime, until we could find another computer, those calls were made in, by a person. And so during the hours of 8.30 to 5 when our, when our building is open, a staff member will make that, those phone calls. And then at night and in the early morning and on weekends, those calls are made by the 911 operator. Um, we finally found a computer that would, we, would accommodate our phone calls, but actually most people love talking to a real human. Yeah. And even, um, even the 911 uh, dispatchers and even our office just like to make that personal contact. Well, and so we've never moved into another <laughs> computer. They're still being done. Um, personally. Personally, yes. And, you, you know, you get to know these people. And... Um, if a person is called and they don't answer, we call back in, a, in you know, several more times. If there's no contact made, then we'll call an emergency contact person. And as a last resort, we'll call the police and have them go out to check on them. Right. And they have found people that have fallen, um, who have laid, laid on the floor all night long. Wow. Uh, so we wow. know that that it program works. works. It is free. And there are other programs out there where you wear a little device around mm -hmm. your neck or on your wrist, and that that's great too. There is a fee involved with that, but um, our program is free. And it uh, accomplishes essentially the, the, sort of the same thing. I, I uh, was curious to now to get on that list. You just call have our to call your department and say I want to be put right. on that list. And we'll and take the information. Take it from there. Mm -hmm. yeah, very good. Yeah. Um, you can't obviously do all of this stuff without great partnerships in the community. If you want to, if nothing else, give some kudos, I guess, to a lot of the partners. But uh, clearly, uh, it takes a lot to, to make it happen. Who are some of the folks that you oh do work goodness. with? Oh, my goodness. And I'm going to have to refer to my notes because there's so many. Um, we contract out with SCUSA to provide transportation for our department. Um, Care Cafe, we mm -hmm. have sent clients there. Um, our I'm 
personally involved with the Adult Daycare Day Health Initiative mm -hmm. to bring adult daycare to Stanley County. Um, Oasis, they do a great job in providing transportation as well as some minor home repair to, to people. And, and Oasis is an acronym for, for older adults in service in Stanley County. Um, we partner with Albemarle Parks and Recreation for senior games. Uh, we, con we work with the hospital to sometimes to bring in speakers, not only to the senior center, but also to the nutrition sites. We contract with four home care agencies for, to provide in-home aids for our clients. We've worked with the Albemarle Fire Department in the past with volunteer fire departments. We've worked with the health department. Mm -hmm. um, and I know I'm leaving out a lot of people, but um, we do. We, I'd like to think that we're a good um, community partner in the community. We certainly appreciate the support that we get from other community agencies, and we, uh, I'd like to think we, we freely give it to anybody that needs our help as well. Yeah. Well, I think it's, uh, it's a good example, as you mentioned, about the importance of collaborating with others, because none of us have the expertise. There's a lot of complexities to uh, uh, services for seniors or any particular sector, and uh, you know you have to avail yourself to others to uh, bring their expertise and uh, assistance. And y'all do a, a great job Thank with you. doing that. Um, there's only so much that that a current staff and current budget can do, can do. and so in partnering with others, we're able to do so much more, and 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 enable the partnering agency to do more too. Right. So. Well, you uh, uh, you mentioned several uh, opportunities for volunteers. Obviously, is a big thing, and you did allude earlier that um, if if any of these kinds of programs. Uh, spark an interest in folks, they just need to call y'all. They do, yes. And let you know. Absolutely, call us and let us know. Um, um, we use volunteers as to deliver home delivered meals as we are, have already talked about, but we also have volunteers who help plan and decorate for our monthly lunches, for our monthly dances. We have clerical volunteers. We have someone who just is responsible for, for making sure our library at the Senior Center is looks, um, is easily uh, readable and a lot mm -hmm. of the books are in there in alphabetical Ordered order. Um, we, we use a lot of volunteers. We have a volunteer board too called the Friends of the Senior Center who, ra help to, to, who raise money for us whenever we need things in our department that our current budget will not allow. It's a very good point because uh, I'm sure you need to lean on that every now and then mm -hmm. when you need something and uh, having that extra fund there is is obviously very very beneficial. It is. Yeah. Um, Y'all have a newsletter as well. We that do. You, uh, and I have one with me. Produce. Um, how can folks uh, receive that? Okay. Um, this newsletter is free if they come by the senior center, or they can get it by email, okay. and it is free. Um, if you will want it mailed to your house, it is a subscription charge of $6 a year. Now the newsletter is sent out every two months, so it's a bi-monthly bi newsletter. But it lists all of our activities, um, it even has a calendar in the middle to tell you what goes on each day. Um, when there's room, we try to put a recipe in there. Um, anyway. So it's actually, probably the quickest and easiest would be to get it by email. It would and be. Just letting, letting y'all know that this is my email address and I'd like to get it. It sounds pretty simple. It is. And I didn't mention this, but they can also go online to, I believe, the county and then a website and then go to our department and you can also see it, see it on our see website on, okay. as well. Very good. And, I, and looking at the calendar, I would, with as much as you have going on, I think the calendar would be something you would need to reference pretty regularly. It, it, we do. Yeah. yeah. You know, there are, um, talking about the different activities, there are actually days that we need another room or two. Yeah. Um, so. Busy, busy place. What are uh, your hours, and just for folks who may not know, where you're located? Okay. We're located at 283 North 3rd Street, and we're in the Old Armory as a lot of people who grew up here know where that is. Uh, we're across from the Central School, the new mm -hmm. Central School that used to be Albemarle Middle School, who, what used to be Albemarle High School, I believe. Right. Um, we're on the corner of Third St North 3rd Street and Montgomery. Um, our hours are 8.30 to 5, Monday through Friday. 
That is the hours that the staff is there. We do have evening activities Monday through Thursday and sometimes on Fridays once a month or so. So, um, so there's other times yeah, there are other special times. things are, yes. are planned uh, and yes. going on. Well, are there any other items you want to share before we close? It's uh, uh, amazing the amount of work that goes Thank on you. there and the services. And probably, I would guess, many of our viewers are not aware that all this stuff takes place right here in Stanley County. Yeah, well, thank you. Um, um, I know as I've sat here, I've thought of some things that we do that I haven't even mentioned. Um, and I, I guess the, the one thing I want to make sure people know, that the viewers know, is that yes, we do serve the seniors in Stanley County. Our mission statement is to provide quality programs and services and supports for the senior, for the adults that are 60 years old and older in Stanley County. We do have a lot of things though that you do not have to be 60 years old to, to participate in. Mm -hmm. um, also that the aging population is, is going up and I know you mentioned mm -hmm. that. So I know the demand for our services, for our programs and activities will continue to increase. And what we're offering now will be different than what we offer 20 years from now because what we're offering now is different from what we offered 20 years ago. Yeah, so it's, you have to stay on top of sort of we, what those changes are. We do, we, and we really strive and attempt to stay on top of those. Yeah. Um, but we, and we could not do all that we do without our wonderful volunteers. Um, and Well, I, I think the, uh, uh, I know for me it's been, uh, it's been it's always good as a partner uh, department to hear all the good things that goes on and uh, I want to again thank you and your staff for all the work that goes on and I would encourage our viewers if you've got folks who uh, who uh, could benefit from the senior services programs please let them know we'll have the the number listed on our screen and uh, uh, it's a nice little jewel here in Stanley County thank so you thank you for joining me Thank you. I've enjoyed it. Good. All right. Well, for uh, this particular program, we'll close. And until we have our next program, I wish you all a healthy, happy day. Thank you.